against IS. Well, yeah, if you bankrupt the country, there won't be any more giant defense budget. I mean, leave the golden goose alone and take the egg each morning. I mean, even if they were crooks, they should be smarter than this. But they just have this greedy will to squeeze blood out of a stone. Dr. Pachenik, I want to start throwing it here to David Knight for some of his questions and comments as we segue into him hosting most of this fourth hour today. But I see the attacks. I see the mainstream media attacks literally. Thousands of articles a week on average now lying about this show, but lying about Trump, lying about everybody else, lying about anybody who isn't, you know, basically part of the end gang. It doesn't work, though. I mean, I'm not just saying that. Doesn't the establishment get that? No, not really. When, when you're desperate and this establishment is desperate and we're talking about the military industrial complex and Obama, he's not a man who has. A strong, a strong sense of integrity or honesty. He, he likes to pretend that. The reality is they're working out of desperation. They have no ability to create a creative strategy or think out of the box. In fact, what's happening now, you should think of it as really the reward for 21 years of being successful. When people are dying or they're desperate in their ability to continue this addictive behavior of self-destruction, of destroying our economy, of going to war. No, it cost us six trillion dollars the Afghanistan war, and we've been there 14 years. Cost us another couple of trillion dollars in Iraq, and we've been there. The military-industrial complex doesn't care how many people die for them. They don't care how much money is sacked out of the system. Remember, a politician is not really a job. A politician is just an excuse for narcissism and sociopathy. To get into power. Look at how they treat the veterans. I mean, they just, just... They don't care. I mean, my friends who are in charge of the veterans, I talk to the veterans, they don't care. This is cannon fodder. What basically happens is the industry wants to go from bandages to bullets, and once they create the cannon fodder they need, they really don't care. But people like Trump are coming in, and people like yourself and the generals who do care, the ones who go to the Army hospitals, not the ones who have never been in the military, avoided the draft like Jeb Bush or Obama or Bill Clinton or Hillary, Hillary Clinton, who's never been effective in combat, has never been effective in creating... Isn't that our greatest weakness, is that we have this, this leadership that is so yes, soft? and that's why we have to get rid of it. It's a cancer. It's a cancer of the spoiled, the entitled, and the uh, narcissist. And Hillary is the classical pathological liar who can't tell you the right from wrong. I mean, I happen to know her daughter, who's a very sweet girl. But the reality is that Bill and Hillary are literally what we call folie à deux. Two people going along, making believe that their fantasy world can be imposed on our world. Bill tried it. It didn't work, really. And then he changed the narrative. Hillary will try, but my suspicion and my prediction is Trump will devastate her. He will devastate it to the point where physically she won't be able to handle him because the amount well, obviously of Hillary knows Trump has major backing by hardcore patriots, right? I mean, well, high level she knows that, but she marginalizes us. Basically, in her mind, we're not relevant to the major discord. What she's looking at is the electoral college, which can be jimmied with or can be fixed or with the uh, election booths that Sununu fixed for the Bush family. You know, these are the kind of things that Trump has to know that can be fixed or in any way jimmied and, and, and corrupted. When, in fact, the republic, if they were to take a vote now, and that's why I wanted a referendum now, Trump would come in without any discussion. Yeah, even in fixed polls, he's dead heat or two points ahead of Hillary. Well, it's not even that. I mean, it, it really is as simple as the fact that do you want this person who can do things come in or do you want somebody who's never been able to accomplish anything except to... Well, exactly. We know Hillary and Bernie Sanders and Jeb Bush are a joke. And you notice that they've just been writing him off, writing him off, writing him off. Now they've got their different campaign people talking about killing him on TV and radio. I mean, they really are pieces of work. Don't they get running two dynasties? is what created the vacuum that allowed a Trump to come in. And if they don't let something real happen after that, the pressure only is going to intensify? They don't care. Uh, you have to understand the Clintons and the Bushes really don't care about the republic. Basically, you have to remember that 
the old man, 41, uh, George H.W. Bush. I mean, a Bush was really a car salesman. When he finally married a, uh, a Prescott, they came into the social system and worked their way up as opportunists. Now, that's not what the Bush wanted to tell you, but basically that's the history. Clinton's history is a much more sordid one. He claims his father left and his mother was a nurse. Not correct. She's a prostitute. He, she was a prostitute, and he grew up in Hope, Arkansas. She was a prostitute for the mob, and that's where the mob would go before they came to Miami. So everything about Bill and Hillary is just an absolute nonsensical fantasy, which, you know, people can enjoy or they can take seriously and claim, oh, we need a woman. The truth is we have 150 women who run companies like Northrop Grumman and major electronic companies who are far more talented than she is and will come and do in due time after Trump. And once Trump comes in, cleans out the place, he's going to leave. He's not a, a professional politician. His job is just to clean sweep this entire country so that we can have a system that has some credibility and accountability. That's his. He uh, says his he's willing to go up against the mafias. And when he starts calling for, you know, not letting corporations be tax exempt offshore, or going after Wall Street, when he starts going after those uh, cash cows, he certainly is signaling he means war. Uh, he does say some incendiary things, but, you know, again, nobody's perfect. I want to bring David Knight in here uh, separately. He's about to take over in about five minutes. Steve Pachenik is our guest. Comments, David, also questions for Steve Pachenik. Regardless, no one can deny, David, and I want to get your take on this, that there is a huge counter coup or soft coup. I've used those terms as well that Dr. Pachenik used. It's so over the top that our military is publicly saying no. We told people years ago it was happening. Now it's confirmed. I mean, we had major guests confirming it. I talked to some of these military people. I mean, but this is huge. This is just, this is like a soft Valkyrie, uh, you know, a.k.a. 1944, David Knight. Yeah, Alex, I would like to get uh, Dr. Pachenik's comments on the uh, on what former Democrat presidential anything. candidate uh, Jim Webb said about Hillary Clinton this week when he attacked her for inept leadership. I think it was uh, absolutely amazing what he put out there as a Democrat. He said Hillary Clinton should be called to account for inept leadership that brought about the chaos in Libya, the power vacuums that resulted in the rest of the region. While she held that office, the U.S. spent about $2 billion backing the Libyan uprising against Gaddafi, the uprising which in part uh, was part of the Arab Spring, led directly to him being removed. Now we have 2,000 ISIS terrorists. It's exactly the same thing we've been seeing here. And, of course, uh, exactly. Webb was Exactly. What the, do you make? I don't think you could hear you, but yeah. they've now piped him audio. Uh, Dr. Pachinik, about even Democrats coming out now, members of Congress saying, Hillary, you ran the destruction of Libya and others. You're a joke. I think there are extremely well-meaning Democrats. You know, you can't put everybody in one pile. But I think if they were smart, if they really wanted to have a viable candidate, Hillary Clinton's not their candidate. I'm glad that Jim Webb came in as an independent. He served our country. Uh, he's a great American. Uh, he's a good novelist. But I think the Democrats have to seriously think that they want to put up a couple of hundred million on a person who's over 69 years old, who claims that she couldn't see, had a flu attack, and basically messed up in Libya, Benghazi, the State Department, and everywhere else, that this is not a viable candidate. I mean, I'm a realist, and I could care sure. less whether she... I mean, do our elites not. really want us to be run by dirtbag mafias? Well, it's not a question, do they want to? The real question for them is, what do they get in return? The Clintons, with this Clinton Foundation around the world, are very good at being able to trade off all kinds of favors, even using the State Department. When she was in the State Department, she gave all kinds of, of, uh, of kudos and, and uh, goodies to Saudi Arabia, to all kinds of um, Salafist regimes who really persecute women. And at the same time, she claims she's for women's rights. Yet on the other hand, she's funded by the very comp the countries that suppress women all over the world, particularly in the Sunni world. And they know that. And she knows that. But she writes that off. The same thing with Bill. He doesn't care who he deals with That's right. as long as they're funded. Their obsession is money and corruption. They don't know any other uh, alternative to it. And I thought Obama would come in and be able to change that narrative. But in fact, it was pathetic. It was even a more pathetic narrative because he accomplished nothing, as opposed to a bill where he might say something, and there was a little bit of drama I agree. there. 
I'm going to skip this network break. Last one of the week. No more. I can't keep doing this. And just please support our sponsors. Please check out the products, <laughs> InfoWarsLife.com. David Knight's going to be taking over uh, in the last half hour of the show, but I want to bring him back in. Uh, I mean, we're sitting here looking at this while the average American is watching NFL football or whatever. And I'm not bashing him. I get it. I used to love football, played football. But that's all entertainment. And I wonder what's going to happen as – the general public, as the economy gets worse, begins to realize what's happening. Because if the police and military already know what's going on, if the bureaucracy already knows what's going on, not because they're perfect, but because they're more close to the info, you know, it's their jobs. What is going to happen if the message of liberty has sold massively successfully with the people that run the country? If we've already basically won many areas of that fight, what's going to happen when the zombie public wakes up to it? I mean, I'm sorry. I know the globalists are going to try to run some kind of Black Lives Matter, kill the police movement, but that's not going to that's not going to save them. They're not going to run a George Soros overthrow Ukraine uh, type deal here and scapegoat the local police. And a lot of local police are out of control. But the point is, that's not our biggest issue. Uh, I mean, I, I really see him trying to run some Saul Alinsky socialist uh, destabilization campaign. That's their planet regime change, like a coup on our coup politically. But I just don't see that duck flying, Dr. Pachinik. Then I want to get David Knight to pop well, in here. I, I don't think that's going to work. I, uh, first of all, I've met Soros. He's, he's singularly unimpressive. He's a man who made his fortunes by chance and by luck and by being very devious during World War II and subsequently. So he's not a man of integrity or somebody I would admire. I even met him in Russia. But the reality is he is far less relevant to the American narrative than the Americans themselves. And what do I mean? The, the billionaires or the millionaires, they are not as relevant as the, the business people in the country who are the farmers, the, the, the uh, car mechanics, the truckers, I mean, we have a vibrant economy that's going everywhere. Once Trump comes in and reverses inversion, which means he's going to take back those countries that decided to buy up a uh, Ireland company on a piece of paper, everything is going to change. But we have to be able to elect that man. Once we can elect that man, the entire narrative will change. Up to that point, I just want to hold off on violence or on any other uh, aspect of rebellion. But remember, we've been in rebellion since the beginning of the, uh, the Republic. Jefferson. That's why the they're so that, scared of us. They, they, they know those coals are still in the fireplace and explode at any time. You're absolutely right. We have well, the power. They're, they're Raising our kids, that. being strong, working hard. Uh, uh, they want to break our will by being good and doing what's right. That's literally a chain reaction. It's a spirit. It, 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 and I, I don't use a spiritual term for no reason. It's electrical. It's science. We stand up, we trump them. We lay down and believe they're beating us, they win. Resistance is victory. Correct. And, and, and the truth will overcome everything else, believe me. I mean, I've believed in the truth. You know, I've worked for what I believe to be the truth. I can't say I'm sacrosanct. None of us are perfect. Honestly, that is exactly what we're about. And we're willing to die for it. It was as simple as that. And I staked out my claim the day 9-11 came in and even before that. Well, that's our, ace, that's our ace of spades is these, these, these minions, these sociopaths, these sellouts, these narcissists. All they care about is their stinking lives. They don't realize there's something a lot bigger than that, the life of the culture, that's the life correct. of the people. They are scared of us. They know we're not afraid of them, and they hate it. That's correct. They, they hate themselves. David basically Knight? Basically, they're bringing it out. Absolutely. David Knight, uh, questions, comments, jump in here. Yeah, you know, Alex, when I look at this, and of course, we all know uh, and agree with what Jim Webb was saying about Benghazi. And as I look at Benghazi, and Dr. Pachinik has talked about this, we've had Lieutenant Colonel Anthony Schaefer talk about it, uh, laying out exactly what was going on, saying the same things that uh, uh, Jim Webb said about it. But of course, there's a lot of people who still don't hear that. There's a lot of people who still have to understand that. But we don't have to convince everybody. You know, no. you can you can fool some of the people all the time, but you need to just get a critical mass. And I think we're very close to getting that critical mass. I agree with David. If you really begin to analyze the Revolutionary War, it was only four to six percent of the uh, public that was involved in the actual fighting and demonstration. So David is correct. I don't need a majority. I just need sure. a, a crux of the, the the integrity. I need the. The Christians who understand what their values are. I need the people who understand their gun rights, their rights for freedom, 
and who studied it. I don't have a problem when people are watching football or games. They have to watch. There's too much background. you got to have R&R. &R. But, but you're right. Obama said bitter clingers, gun-owning Christians, people that believe in something. Doesn't mean we're perfect or have all the answers, but we believe no. in something, and it isn't 